Hello, I'm Charles Dowding. I'm at Homaker's Garden, which I arrived in when it wasn't a garden at all. It was a weedy field six years ago. And I'm showing you some of it here from the air because you get a nice idea then of where it extends to. I've noticed from comments on my videos that uh, when people come to the garden here, they're, they're expressing surprise at how it all fits together and, and, and seeing the, the sense of what's next to what. So from the air, you can see the different parts. It's a plot of three quarters of an acre, 30,000 square feet. And of that area, I'm cropping around a third. So the area in beds, they're all no dig beds, which means the ground is never tilled. I mulch with compost. Mulching means feeding the soil, covering the soil from above. I do that just once a year in the autumn because I'm in a very weed free situation now. Thanks to the initial mulch, which was more difficult in year one. And that's when I used a few mulches of polythene, but mostly compost and cardboard in various combinations, even bits of old woolen carpet. So that was year one, get the perennial weeds killed, because when I arrived at this, this garden was a mass of uh, dandelions, buttercups, bindweed, cooch grass, some quite vigorous perennial weeds which don't just die of their own volition, you've got to work at it a bit. But mulching, which is the no-dig approach, not disturbing the soil at all, is extremely effective at getting rid of perennial weeds so they don't regrow. You don't disturb the soil, they die in situ. It's a very win-win method. And from that, the result is what you can see now in this footage, hardly any weeds. I do actually go through the garden periodically, kind of looking for weeds. I'm not waiting for them to jump out at me because they got big. I'm looking for small weeds. And this is a habit I'm always encouraging in other gardeners because it can take you to a very good place where weeds don't get the upper hand. Weeds are not weeds for no reason, you know, they're good at what they do, which is growing vigorously and then dropping often lots of seeds. And those seeds are very good at staying viable in the soil for quite a long time. The old saying is one year's weeding, seven years seeding. So you just don't want to go there. And this garden, as a result of me having a habit of just pulling out weeds when they're small or hoeing them when they're small, it stays clean all the time. A lovely result of having a clean garden is that you're not overwhelmed with work. Time. Time, I feel, is what most gardeners are short of. To have a really good garden, you do need time to do the creative jobs. The sowing, the planting, the thinning, the covering against pests, whatever that might be, according to your situation, and finally, the picking. This is September, so we're in early autumn, northern hemisphere. We're spending a good half of our time picking. So harvesting, you do need to allow for that. The, uh, I always think the year kind of roughly divides into different sections. And the first section in the spring is the most creative one when one is sowing, planting new beds. And that leads on to summer harvests because a lot of vegetables grow in half a season. And then there's a lot of re-sowing and replanting. There's a kind of second spring in August. And most of what you're seeing in this footage here is summer planting. It's a second crop. We've already taken harvest in May, June, July of vegetables like peas, broad beans, carrots, beetroot, spring cabbage, spring onions, many, many vegetables. And then we clear them, simply twist them out. No soil cultivation and no more compost added. It's very quick, again, time saving pop in the new plants. And so what you're seeing here is beetroot, carrots re-sown second time round, lettuce replanted second crop or third crop even in some places, um, autumn broccoli, uh, plants even for next spring, spring purple sprouting broccoli, many, many vegetables which crop coming towards Christmas and then even some that stay in the ground, like leeks as well. And so the garden always stays full. The no-dig method is brilliant for allowing you to water less because the undisturbed soil holds onto its moisture better and the fungal network in soil is already present. It hasn't been broken by cultivation. Roots can team up with fungi, mycorrhizal fungi in particular, and they access tiny crevices in soil which roots can't get into. 
So we found this summer that we've had to water quite a bit less than other gardeners around here. And we're concentrating our watering on new plantings, salads and crops just coming to fruition. This year has been a very dry summer. The grass that is now green at one point was actually almost all brown. And the bits that have stayed brown, you can see the lines in the grass and that is where there are concrete foundations from when this was a nursery. In the 1960s, 70s, 80s there were greenhouses here. Mostly around the edge, fortunately, of where I'm cropping now, and that is why there are lines in the grass that you see. No dig gardening is really fun. I do urge you to give it a go, and I trust this film, that what you see here will encourage you, because you can see not only how much there is growing here, but also, and this is really important and not often mentioned, how beautiful these plants are. Healthy vegetables just have a luster about them, they look alluring. And that tends to draw you into the garden. It's not like you come out and, oh my God, there's all that weeding to do. No, nope, you can just crack on and have fun. And that is the result of being on the game, no dig. So yeah, have a go yourselves.